Welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over my number one tip to accelerating your path to successful trading. If you are new to trading or if you've been trading for a while but are overwhelmed with the amount of information that is out there, then this video is for you and it's going to help put you on a clear path to accelerating that process. My name is Shiler and I'm a full-time Elliott Wave trader, specifically in the crypto market since 2017. I run a community of over a thousand members now, and I have five other full-time professional traders alongside me that help inside of that community. If you like the content that's in this video, I invite you to sign up for my free webinar on the best solutions I've found for increasing profits and becoming an independent trader. The link is down in the description below. You can sign up at tradethewave.com. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so as with all good tips, they either come from an experience that you had or they come from a mentor. In my case, I had to learn the hard way. And once I started implementing what I'm going to teach you here is once I finally started getting results. Uh, before that, I was just overwhelmed with the amount of information out there in the financial world. Uh, there's a trading style and indicators galore for everything. And you probably are experiencing this right now as well, learning about the thousands of different indicators, which one's the best one, what strategies to follow, what type of trading style you should do, this, that. It's just overwhelming. And it keeps you spinning your wheels because of it. And it wasn't until I actually started focusing my attention on just one system and one thing that it actually started to garner results for myself. And that's exactly what my number one tip is out there for everybody else as well that's either starting or been overwhelmed with the amount of information that's out there right now is that if you direct all of your attention to learning a little bit of everything, you're going only going to be a little bit good at everything and you're not going to master anything. And so... The reality is, is that all the styles, all the indicators, all the strategies, they all work. And so it's just that you need to make them work by actually mastering them and not just learning about them or learning the basics about them, but actually learning about the intricacies of them. And so in this video, I'm going to give you a framework at least on how to actually execute on this. So not just the tip that says, hey, look, focus your attention, but I actually want to give you the framework that says, look, this is how you can break it down for yourself to actually stick to a path and narrow down your focus as to what you should concentrate on. Because most people are going to argue that, well, you don't know what you don't know. And <laughs> as funny as that sounds, but it's very true. If you don't know about the different trading styles or the different trading strategies, how do you know which one is right for you? So I'm gonna give you the framework to break this down so you know where to focus your attention and what best fits your style. Let's dive in. All right, number one tip to trading success is to stay focused on one system till you master it. Psychologically speaking, as traders, we always wanna be in the market. We don't like missing out on opportunities. So we always have the need to wanna to be in a trade. The reality is, is that even when you master a strategy, that strategy can only be used so many times. So if you want to take more trades in the market, you have to master more strategies. But the key word being master. Most of the time we just learn about strategies or learn about and absorb information. But we don't know how to actually apply it. So this video is going to be geared towards showing you a path to where you can focus your attention on mastering one system and also figuring out what that system should be for you. There is a lot of different paths that you can take, all of them which do lead to success if you master them. Uh, there is not just one, one single path that is the winner, nor is there just one single strategy or one single indicator. It's about mastering them and getting good with them and then expanding your knowledge with them, but one step at a time. So how are we going to actually execute on this? It's going to break down into eight categories. We're going to take a look at the broad outlook of categories, styles, and strategies. We're going to talk about choosing a mentor now or later. Uh, you're going to choose your type. And I'm going to correlate this to gaming since most people uh, have played games once in their life or are currently playing games. Uh, so I'm going to try and correlate it to gaming a little bit so that you understand it. So that's going to be like choosing your race. So if you like play an RPG or Skyrim or World of Warcraft, whatever it might be, that's going to be like picking your race, choosing your psychology and risk tolerance. OK, this is going to be like what type of a player are you going to be like, a, you know, are you going to be a role playing? Are you going to be player versus player? Are you going to do raids, uh, et cetera? So you're going to choose your technique. This is going to be like your class, whether you're a mage or a healer or a warrior. I'm going to show you about that. Choose your analysis. So this is like your arsenal, like what weapons are you going to go into the charts with? in order to execute your strategies, okay? Your indicators are part of your arsenal as well, but they have a whole subcategory of themselves, which I'm gonna share a few tips about as well. And then choosing your strategies. These are like your special moves. So in relation 
to gaming you know you can go in with the same amount of same weapon as the other person but if one of you knows how to use it better than the other then it makes a big difference so that's going to be your strategies who's got the better strategies and what are yours so the broad outlook of this is going to break down into eight categories here we're going to talk about the traders style of trading types of analysis risk tolerance uh small account versus large account types of indicators strategies mentors and also psychology So we got to figure out choosing a mentor now or choosing one later, what are the pros and cons of it? To me, that's always a must. Uh, mentors will always accelerate the process with just about anything. There are good ones and there are bad ones with just about anything. Do your research in regards to picking one out, whether or not to pick one now or later. If you pick one now, it allows you to just focus solely on that one individual, his systems or her systems, strategies, uh, techniques. It, it makes it very clear and simple for you. Just follow that one path. It obviously works. You just need to make it work. The downside to it is that you don't know anything about yourself as to whether or not that style is a good fit for you. So maybe you're interested in that person and their techniques because they make a lot of money. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good fit for your trading psychology, what your strengths and weaknesses are, what your personality are. So those that are most successful in trading tend to be the most self-aware. They know themselves in and out, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how they react, very self-aware of their emotions. Okay, so the psychology takes a big toll on that. So choosing a mentor later allows you to go through the system that I'm going to show you here in the process and the framework. And this video allows you to go through this framework first and learn about what trading style is best for you, what type of a trader you want to be, what type of uh, technical analysis you want to use, um, et cetera. So by knowing all of that stuff, you can then go out and look for a very specific ideal mentor. And that would be a much better fit, most likely, than maybe running into some bad mentors due to your lack of understanding about yourself. So choosing a type, by that I mean like what type of a, a trader do you want to be? Do you want to be a scalper, a day trader, a swing trader? Okay, this is just like if you're going into World of Warcraft, you got to pick, you know, do you want to be a gnome, a human? Do you want to be a, a an elf, right? You got to pick out your race. Which type of a trader do you want to be? Swing trader, day trader, scalper. Things that are going to go into this are like, do you have a job? Are you patient person? Do you like being exposed and being in the in the charts and being in the market. Okay. Uh, do you want to be a long-term investor like position trader? Do you want to do longer holds? All right. Do you want to be in and out of the market super quick and take your profits immediately? Uh, I'd be focused on a scalper. Okay. So a quick Google search and just learning about these briefly can give you a good idea. So, Hey, which one best fits me? Do I have a job? Do I not? Do I want to be a day trader? Do I want to be fast? Do I want to be slow, et cetera? One of the things that's going to go into picking out your type of trader that you want to be is the psychology. You knowing about yourself, again, whether you're a patient person or an impatient person. If you're impatient, then maybe scalping or day trading would be better for you. If you have a higher risk tolerance, then maybe swing trading would be better for you because you don't mind the exposure in the market. You don't mind the larger stop loss, uh, You know the bigger risk to reward ratios, etc. So learning about that and knowing about yourself can allow you to pick out a good trading style that fits your lifestyle right now. And the same with risk management. The type of trader that you're going to be is obviously going to correlate right to your risk management as well. Scalpers and day traders usually have tighter stop losses. Uh, they are exposed to more losses in the market quicker. It's more fast paced. Okay, so this is going to be like, do you want to be player versus player? Do you want to do raids? Do you want to do the role playing? Uh, in correlation to like games, you got to figure out like what, which one am I going to do? Then we've got to choose your analysis. There are three main types. We've got fundamental, technical, and sentimental. Uh, most popular are fundamental and technical, and most people are going to be technical based. This would be basically like picking whether or not you want to be a mage, a healer, or a warrior, right? You're going to get uh, different skill sets with it and different weapons to work with. So Let's say most people are going to be going with technical. And in that case, we have to choose, okay, what type of arsenal do we want? What it, what technical analysis are we going to use? And it breaks up into several different types, but probably some of the most popular ones are going to be like 
Elliott Wave, Harmonic Patterns, Price Action, Wyckoff, GAN Analysis, Fibonacci, and then Indicators in themselves are just an entire category as well. So again, we got to pick out, you know, what do we want to go into the charts with? What is our weapon going to be and able to execute our strategies with that? So next is going to be indicators. Since they're a category all on themselves, I'm going to actually break down to the four main categories that they all fall into. You have leading and lagging indicators. You can learn a little bit about that. And then they fall into the categories of trend, momentum, volatility, and volume. A few tips to kind of take away from this uh, to accelerate the process for you as you learn about these are going to be focus on only two or three indicators and learn their intricacies. Uh, for me personally, I use Elliott Wave. RSI and Fibonacci. Those three things are all I use with five strategies in order to have consistency. Tip number two is don't use indicators that generate the same signal. So in other words, try and pick indicators out of different categories like a trend one, a momentum one, and a volatility one. Okay, but you also need to understand why you would use one indicator over another. Some Indicators are best used on higher time frames. Others are best used on smaller time frames. So just brief little searches to kind of understand this will give you an idea. One thing that can really speed this up as well is a mentor, right? Once you understand what type of a trader you want to be, whether it's just swing trading or day trading or scalping, and you understand maybe that you want to use Elliott Wave or Harmonic Patterns as your main focus, uh, but you're really not sure about the indicators because there's just so many of them and it's a whole other realm in itself, then Find a mentor that is using Elliott Wave and is is a day trader. You know, find that mentor and then follow their system. See what indicators they're using and go master those. But really keep it focused. The key here over everything that we're talking about is to keep it focused so that you're not pulling your attention all different realms of information that's out there because you can spend a lifetime learning about everything that there is in the financial industry in regards to indicators, strategies, techniques, trading styles, it's galore, okay? And then lastly, tip number four here is that timeframes make a huge impact on indicators. So observe observe this going into it. Um, I, can't, I can't stress enough, a lot of people really don't talk about timeframes, but because you can work on any time frame. Smaller time frames are going to give signals that play out according to that time frame. So in other words, if I get a buy signal on a 15 minute time frame, then I can't expect a massive run to happen out of that 15 minute time frame. I need to know what type of a trend or what type of of time frame the market is moving on. So your signal makes a big impact on what time frame you're working with. So. That's indicators. It's a whole world in itself, really. Um, and then people piece indicators together to create like master indicators. Uh, again, don't get distracted by all the shiny objects. The reality is, is that the basic indicators work just fine. It's just that people don't get intricate with it. They don't get specialized and actually master it. All right. They just learn the basics about it. They don't apply it to the charts. They don't observe every little thing that's going on with it. So make sure that you're mastering it and really focusing on just two or three and not filling your screen with a bunch of indicators. And then lastly here, we're coming into the strategies now. So again, this is like if you're if you're running into battle, you decided that you're going to be a mage, do PVP, and you picked the, for your arsenal, you picked Elliott Wave, which was the you know Wand of Azeroth or whatever, and now you're going into battle. You need to know how to be able to use that weapon. You need to know how to be able to use Elliott Wave and you need to have strategies like special moves basically that you use over and over that are just killer moves. And that's what strategies is. Now, you can't always use them. So you're going into battle looking for the right victim to for these strategies basically. You want to go in with intention and you want, you're looking for the right setups with it as well. So strategies are so key. A lot of people talk about trading psychology, and I swear that the right strategies and risk management will cure 90% of trading psychology for you. It will calm your nerves. It will give you something to focus on uh, so you don't FOMO in, so you don't get insecure. You'll trust your strategies. You'll become very good with them. Uh, so strategies are a must same with risk management and just focusing on one system, following a mentor in and out and not getting distracted by the countless YouTubers out there, myself included, you know, offering in endless information and their own opinions about the chart and where it's going up or down. 
Go get yourself strategies to follow, a system to follow, and focus on mastering just this one thing. All right, in summary, we went over quite a bit here, so I wanna do a quick recap. And in summary, really the big main focus to take away from this is mastering one system. But to figure out what that system is that you should be mastering, you can follow the framework that I've provided in this video which is to figure out the type of trader you want to be, whether or not you want to do a mentor now or later, once you've learned a bit about yourself, being self-aware and understanding your psychology and the type of risk that you want to expose yourself to impacts the type of trader that you'll be, the type of analysis that you'll use, whether it's fundamental, technical, or sentimental, what technical analysis to focus on out of those groups. So with in regards to technical analysis, we talked about Elliott Wave, Harmonic Patterns, Wyckoff, Price Action, Fibonacci, and Indicators. Choosing and using those indicators since they're a whole nother category on their own. We talked about three, four main tips on indicators, and we went into mastering strategies as the last part of that, which should be used with your mentor hand in hand and mastering their strategies that have already been proven. Once you found the system that you want to master, it's just all about being consistent with it. And at that point, you're just going to become a badass trailer. So if you enjoyed this video, then I invite you to come learn more about the system that I use that has helped hundreds of students become independent traders themselves. You can register for my free webinar on the best solutions I've found to increasing profits and becoming an independent trader at tradethewave.com. Link will be down in the description below as well. I'll see you on the other side.